hello, welcome back, welcome if you're new here. This is the Relax It's Not That Bad podcast. We talk about a lot of shit, okay? Mostly like unhinged, uncomfortable shit. So if you're not comfortable in the uncomfortable, this probably isn't the place for you. If you are, hi, hello, welcome, stay a little bit or don't. I don't really care either way. Now I know. I said I was back and then I disappeared again. And let me tell you. I don't even, one, I don't know if you, I've been trying to get over like a cold or something. I don't know. Remember how I was sick for months and months and then it went away for a little bit. I swear now it's back. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me. Probably something that I need to seriously get checked out, but I don't have time for that. There have been a lot of life changes recently and (laughs) I don't know. There's just been so much going on and we're going to talk about it. Okay. First of all, I know different setting, different background. I just, I don't have the energy to set everything upstairs like I normally do. So I am actually on my couch right now. So if you see furry friends visiting every now and again, can't help it. Okay. I'm like out in the open. Also, my children are asleep. So I'm trying not to wake them up even though usually they stay asleep when I'm doing my episodes I don't know I just didn't want to be like locked up in a fucking room tonight okay just not good vibes um but yeah I've had a lot going on and I feel like the podcast has kind of taken a backseat which you know again I wanted this to be something that wasn't an obligation for me and I'm glad that I've made that. Like, I'm sure it's shitty for people who expect weekly updates. <sighs> Hopefully, things start slowing down a bit so I can get back to that, okay? Because it's been fucking crazy. I feel like every time I get back into a routine of things, something else comes along. Yeah, it's just crazy, crazy shit. Um, I am no longer a homeschool mom. Yeah, it was kind of like a spur of the moment decision, but like for my sanity, I had to send them to school and I actually don't regret it. A lot of you guys know that my oldest is deaf with cochlear implants and he requires a lot of like outside resources, right? And now um, that he is going to school on base, he has an ASL interpreter from the moment he gets out of my car to the moment he gets back into my car, which I love. He loves his interpreter. I love his interpreter. His friends at school think it's the coolest thing ever. And that's another thing, friends at school. He's doing so well. It just like, it makes me emotional because it's like, I knew that I was doing a good job homeschooling him. Um, But to know that he is on track with his peers and doing so well and thriving and he's not behind, it just was like just that little comfort I needed of like, okay, I wasn't holding him back and he's on track and he's doing good. And then, of course, my second son, you know, he absolutely, he's a social butterfly. He loves it. My oldest is too, but he is more reserved. He's more of the quiet kid. Um, he has his moments where he can be loud. I feel like anybody who has experience with deaf people know that sometimes because they can't hear themselves, they get a little wild and a little crazy. Um, I don't mind it, right? (laughs) I've got four kids. Okay. So wild and crazy is my life. Um, But he is a lot of times on the more reserved side. Um, So to know that he is making friends and his friends at school are taking the time to learn sign language for him to be able to communicate with him. I think that that is such a beautiful thing. Um, uh, Not me about to cry about this. Um, But yeah, I just I think overall it was the best decision for our family. I know that I've always been a huge advocate for homeschooling moms. The thing is, is that I will always say, if you can do it, it's a great experience, you know, whatever. But 
if for some reason something is holding you back. Like, don't do it if it's if you are not 100% committed to it, right? I was 100% committed to it until I wasn't. And then when I wasn't, I enrolled them, right? Because I'm like, I don't want to hold my kids back. I don't want to. And the, I felt like I was being stretched too thin. Like, there wasn't enough of me to go around. And by the end of the day, my kids were getting, like, a half-assed version of their fucking mom. And it made me feel like shit. And I was like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted from motherhood. This is not what I wanted from being a homeschool mom, from being a stay-at-home mom. This was not what I wanted for them. And so I had to make the decision, well, me and my husband, um, to put them in school. I'm so glad that I did that. I'm so freaking excited about it. And it's a new experience for them, obviously. It's a new experience for me. We're working through it together, but they're thriving. I feel like, okay, <laughs> I've got like a little bit more order in my life, right? Um, because I am a routine, structured, schedule kind of person. And it was getting a little crazy. <laughs> and the schedule was getting not so schedule And the routine was getting thrown out of whack. And it was fucking with me hard right? Um, I'm pretty open with the fact that I have bipolar two. One of the things that I feel like helps regulate me is a structured routine. Stick to the routine. Don't go outside of that routine unless it is planned for. And there were too many things going outside of the routine that I was like, oh no, like I, this is too much. I can't handle this. Right. Um, and I know a lot of people are, go with the flow people or they embrace the manic side and they're like, oh, you know, caution to the wind. I'm not like that. Um, I feel like since becoming a mom, I have just drilled it into my head. Like, do not become who raised you. Right. Um, so when it comes to my mental health, I take that very seriously. When it comes to ensuring that I'm the best version of myself for my family, I take that so incredibly seriously. Um, and yeah, just I wasn't vibing, you know, and I like to vibe. I feel like I'm a vibe. Uh, and things weren't vibing around here. Uh, it was like, yeah, you know meme where it's like a little cartoon dog and he's sitting in like a chair or something and then like behind him the house is on fire and the meme is literally just like I'm fine yeah <laughs> that's what was going on um and it was fucking crazy and just not like a good time I also turned 27 recently and I feel like every year on my birthday I go through this whole thing of like what the fuck have I done with my life Right? I feel like I've accomplished nothing. When in reality, bitch, you started a podcast. Um, you got four gorgeous, beautiful fucking children. Oh, and you made it another year without fucking killing yourself. So that's shit to celebrate, right? Um, but I'm miserable every year on my birthday. It never fails. I cry every year on my birthday. I cry. Usually I can hold out till about like, I don't know, like, 10 p.m. to the midnight range. Um, I spent my birthday alone again this year. Woohoo! Uh, my husband is away at training. <laughs> that seems to just be the trend, I feel like, since he's joined the military. I think I have spent three birthdays with him since he's been in. And same for anniversaries. Yep, and actually today, while I'm recording this, is our seventh anniversary wedding anniversary and guess who's not here my husband guess who missed it again my husband <laughs> um but yeah so just recently turned 27 happy birthday to me oh and then three days later it was the 17th anniversary of my sister's death um or should I say murder so you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was like I don't know going a little crazy. I was like, mm, okay. And then that, but luckily that same day, um, or no, not the same day, the day 
of my birthday? No. The day before my birthday. Yeah, I had therapy. So I was like, uh, you know, help me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm doing okay now. I feel like, um, it's also shitty though, because today, while yes, it is my wedding anniversary, it is also would have been my sister's 26th birthday. So I'm sure you can imagine by now, right? Like what the fuck just, (laughs) yeah. Um, my birthday is never like a good thing for me. And, um, I feel like I'm just like in that, like, I'm, I'm just, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. (laughs) So like, yeah, just, uh, I've been stressed. Okay. I've been stressed. I've been overwhelmed and panicking and just not having a good time. And then I'm getting sick and just so much shit has been happening at once. So please forgive me for not having episodes out. Okay. But I'm trying. And right now I'm trying needs to be enough. Not necessarily for you guys, no offense, but to myself, because I am my own worst critic, right? I, there is not a single thing that somebody can say to me that I have not said to myself 10,000 times, okay? Um, and that is something that I'm working on in therapy, but I am my own worst critic. And um, yeah, I just need to remind myself sometimes that me trying is enough. I am trying and I'm giving my fucking best. Right now, my best is keeping my kids fed, happy, alive, keeping myself bare minimum fed and alive, okay? Um, And ensuring that I am making it to the gym because that is something that helps reduce stress for me, at least. Um, When I go to the gym and I get my two hours in, I check the fuck out. I know a lot of people, that's like their time to like sit and like think about things and oh talk about a furry visitor there she is um that's shadow um that's my oldest she belongs to my oldest um i'm hoping that the rest of the year goes better because i don't think i can handle anything else you know um but yeah that's that on that i have been catching up on Love is Blind, trying to catch up on Love is Blind. When I tell you I have watched maybe two straight hours of TV in the past two weeks, I'm being so fucking for real with you guys. Between soccer practice for my kids and school and the gym and me about to start school myself. Oh yeah, that's another thing that's happening. Um, going back to uni, university, um, to continue to go for my bachelor's in English lit, right? Um, Because I would like to eventually be an English teacher, just not. Originally, I was going for um, like childhood education and teaching until I started homeschooling my kids. And let me fucking tell you. Okay, let me tell you. No. (laughs) No. Uh, There is no part of me that wants to be in a room full of little children all day long. Okay. Um, especially not for that salary. So I'm thinking like freshman year and up. Okay. If you hear things going crazy in the background, again, that is my oldest cat. She's currently climbing my window right now. So we're just anyways, moving on. I have been trying to catch up with love is blind. And let me tell you, I'm not that far in, and already I'm pissed the fuck off. First of all, fuck Rob. Also, for those who are, like, also trying to catch up or haven't seen or whatever, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I don't know if they are actually spoilers, but, you know, just fast forward through the next, like, I want to say, like, five, maybe ten minutes. I don't know. You can find it. Whatever. Um, Fuck Rob. Fuck, what's her name? Um, Andrea? the hell? How many times is Hakeem going to call Liv immature? I'm like, uh, how many times can you fucking say that? And mm, pause. I'll come back to that thought. But yeah, there's when Andrea took Rob from Leah, 
the smirk she had on her face the entire time. Oh my God. I like, I was angry. Like it, the camera kept panning back to her and she was just like smirking the whole time. Oh, that, mm, that shit. I don't know how these women do it without like throwing hands. Cause the whole time I was like, what the fuck? I am like fucking floored. Um, I do feel bad for Hannah, but I, at the same time, I'm like, girl, like, what were you doing? You know, like, I feel like Kendall's kind of just like, um, you don't like me kind of thing. But also I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like Kendall and Hannah together. I don't really see it, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I do feel bad for Hannah Uh, But I feel really bad for Leah and I feel really bad. But Leah's like a bad bitch, right? Like you can tell she just has those vibes. So I'm hoping that throughout the rest of the season, we get to see more of Leah, not who Leah is around Rob, right? Um, But yeah, and then, but Liv, like for Hakeem to be sitting there like, are you going to sit down and have an adult conversation with me? Like you're, you're not immature, but you're the one yelling. And she's like, yeah, you're right. I'm not immature. Um, and so it's like, Oh, that gets shit like that gets my fucking blood boiling because men love to do that. Right. Like, Oh, not to get on my fucking soapbox here, but to get on my fucking soapbox, y'all, y'all already know. So strap the fuck in. I get so annoyed when men do things Like, wild, out-of-pocket fucking things, right? Crazy shit. And then when a woman reacts to their crazy-ass fucking behavior, all of a sudden it's, you're crazy, you're psycho, you're immature, you're this, you're this, you're this. Because of how you react to their behavior, mm, (laughs) that shit pisses me the fuck off. And... <clears throat> I don't know like where in the timeline men learn that where they learn I'm going to do all of this out of pocket shit and expect to have no repercussions and no consequences for my actions. Oh, but then the second that this woman who holds herself with value and knows her worth reacts to this, how any sane normal woman would fucking react. I'm going to fucking call her crazy. I'm going to call her immature. I'm going to say she's acting like a child. What? Absolutely wild fucking shit to me. Like, where where the fuck do you get off acting like that, first of all? Second of all, like, his, like, rules that he was making for her, like, oh, you need to work on this. You need to work on this. You need... Uh, Hakeem, how about you work on shutting the fuck up? Hmm? I just, like... Oh, God, I can't fucking stand men like that. And I know that there's probably men out there that are going to hear this and be like, oh, she's a fucking bitch who just runs her mouth and blah, blah. I would never be with. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And you know what I don't respect? I don't respect men who want women who are just going to sit down, shut the fuck up and do as they're told and not speak unless spoken to. I can't fucking stand men like that. I really, truly fucking cannot. I'm not saying be a fucking lap dog for your fucking woman, but it's give and take, you know? There are a lot of things that I would do for my husband that I wouldn't dare do for another fucking man on this fucking planet, but that's because he's fucking earned it, right? And vice versa. My husband treats me like I fucking walk on water. It's, and it's not because I'm sitting here like, fuck you, you fucking peasant ass motherfucker. I, oh, sorry for all the cussing. I'm just, you know, brain, whatever. Um, I respect him. He respects me. And I just think it's fucking wild that there are men out there that think, oh yeah, let me just disrespect my spouse. And in most cases, the mother of my children and have no consequences for it. But there are some people that we know personally where I'm like, grow a fucking spine. Because over my dead body would I ever let a man fucking speak to me like that. Some people are okay with it. 
but not because it's like a, how do I say this without being fucking offensive? I feel like when women have husbands who are so okay with running their fucking mouths and so okay with their husbands doing crazy abusive shit because at the end of the day, you know, he doesn't have to put his hands on you for it to be abuse. Just FYI, right? Um, there's different ways that you can abuse somebody, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, right? Um, there's different ways that you can abuse somebody without putting hands on them. Um, and in some instances, you know, my husband and I have seen things and been like, whoa, that's fucking crazy. And I have thought to myself a lot of times, like, like as a woman, why are you letting this man treat you like this? But I feel like a lot of times, because I have been in situations like that, right? And that's why I say, like, I see a lot of things that I can relate to. I have been in relationships with crazy motherfuckers, okay? Like, I had an ex, literally. <laughs> Did I tell you guys? I feel like I told you guys. I had an ex who literally took my phone out of my hand smashed it all on the ground and then threw it in the fucking woods. Why? Because Zach had texted me and said, Hey, haven't heard from me from you in a while. You doing okay? Yeah. I've had an ex get physically violent with me, block me in his bedroom and prevent me from fucking leaving screaming in my fucking face. Like, yeah. Okay. I've been through it. <laughs> um, and so when I see these things, I'm like, oh my fucking God, like what the fuck? But because it's not physical, I feel like a lot of women who have been in physical relationships think, oh, well, he didn't put his hands on me. So this is still better than what I've been through. And I know that when I was in abusive relationships, that was the thought process that I had where I was like, okay, I've literally had my bones broken. I've been tortured, I've been beaten, I've been abused and starved, sexually assaulted. Like, there's nothing that this man can do to me that is going to break me. There's nothing that this man can do to me that is going to, like, he would have to take my life, right, for the, it to be comparable to the shit that I've gone through in my life. Um, you have crazy fucked up way of thinking, right, but when you're in situations like that and you think, like, it could be worse kind of situation because you've experienced worse and you're sitting there thinking like, oh, this is light work, you know, like, yeah, he is getting disrespectful or yeah, he's doing this or yeah, he's doing this, but I've been through worse. So this is really not that bad. That's such a like dangerous way of thinking, right? And it took me a very, very, very long time and lots of therapy to understand that that way of thinking is so fucking dangerous and that's how you get yourself into situations not necessarily by your own fault, but just because, you know, it's what makes you stay around longer. That and the fact that you love this person, right? I felt like it was easier for me to leave my abusive situations because one, I knew that I always had Zach in my corner and two, I didn't genuinely love these guys. Okay. These were not guys that I was like, oh yeah, I want to settle down, marry you, have children with you. No, um, if anything, anytime these guys would bring it up as like, oh, in the future, I was fucking crazy. I was like, oh fuck, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like this, this is not fucking happening. Right. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's easier to be put in to, to, I guess, be like complacent in a situation where he's not physically hurting you, but he is emotionally hurting you. But because you've experienced physical hurt in the past, you're like, oh, okay. He's just, you know, raising his voice at me, whatever. Um, I can tell you right now and anybody in my life can tell you right now. Um, I don't tolerate that. I, from any man, I don't give a fuck who you are. My husband, my son, my brother, my, well, you know, whatever. I don't care who you are. You're not going to raise your fucking voice at me. That's not going to fucking happen. Um, and immediately I get fucking like, I, it's just 
point blank. You're not going to fucking do that shit. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of women especially think that it, that that is fucking insane, that I will go toe to toe with a man. But for me, my thing is, is that like, I feel like I've said this a couple times too. There are so many people in this world that have not had people push back, that have not had their asses handed to them, that have never had a reality check. And trust me. I will be the person to give that to you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care who the fuck you are. You get disrespectful to me, I'm going to take you to fucking hell with me, okay? And I say that with love and light, okay? I don't go out of my way to be a fucking bitch to people, but I will be if I need to be, right? Um, And that includes men. And unfortunately... A lot of men that I encounter seem to have this belief of, oh, you're a woman? You can't step to me the way that I can step to you. And one of my absolute favorite things is proving them wrong in that, okay? Because again, like I am in therapy for a fucking reason. I told you guys this, right? So I feel like my brain, like half of my brain in the in the back, right? Like the back half is like, Give me five seconds, please. Like, just five seconds. That's all I fucking need. Like, there's, like, I don't know. Like, you're just, like, I almost get excited. <laughs> that probably makes me sound crazy. I don't know. I don't fucking care. Um, but there's, like, a little part of me that, like, enjoys it. That is, like, oh, yeah? Yell some more. Come on. Let's do this. Like, yell at me, call me a bitch, keep going, keep going. Like, I just like, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I'm like, I've been waiting to like unleash all of my rage. Please keep going. Um, and it's a very toxic part of me, but it is a part of me. Um, and a lot of people are uncomfortable with that, especially men. And, but on the other side of it, I feel like there have also been men that like respect the fact of like, oh, okay, like, you take no shit. Okay, cool. I feel like I do my best to get along with everyone that I fucking meet, right? I may not mesh well with you at first, but I don't really go off of first impressions because um, I feel like I'm a terrible judge of character when it comes to first impressions, especially because a lot of people's first impressions of me is that I'm, like, fucking mean, And it's strictly based off of, I don't really talk a whole lot or, you know, my face says a lot of what my mouth doesn't. Um, Or another thing that I get a lot of times is that I'm just hard to read, Um, which, okay, understandable. You know, I do my best not to seem confrontational. I try to seem as friendly as possible. But again, at the same time, like, I'm not going to be focused on how my face is looking all of the fucking time, right? So, for example, like, in the gym, one of the things I get so much from people that I meet and become friends with is when I first saw you come to the gym, like, you looked fucking mean. I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't want to approach you. Like, didn't want to do any of that. I have so many fucking gym friends now, okay? Started the gym. And I'm going to be so fucking honest with you guys. I was terrified of everybody else. Okay. I was fucking scared. I was scared of the gym bros. I was scared of the girls that were lean and skinnier than me and more fit than me and knew what they were doing. And I was fucking terrified. Right. It took me, I think, three weeks just to get out of the section that has like the ellipticals, the, um, treadmills, the Stairmaster, stuff like that. It took me three fucking weeks, no joke, to get out of that area. And when I would get out of that area within those three weeks, I would go to like the private room and do some workouts in there. And that's what I did for three fucking weeks. I'm not joking because I was so terrified of being seen in the fucking gym, right? It like fucked me up. Um, so to hear people tell me, Yeah, when you first started coming, like, you looked mean. Like, you just looked like, don't approach me. 
I'm set. I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. And there's been so many times that I've met people and they're like, oh, like you looked like you knew what you were doing. I fucking did it. I did not know what the fuck I was doing. I was watching videos of people go to the gym and what they would do at this gym. And then I would go to the gym and then I would do that. Right. It took me, I would say probably four and a half, five weeks to go to the gym and be like, okay, I'm going to do what works for me. Right. Those first three weeks, I'm not joking. I was like completely fucking lost, had no clue what the fuck I was doing. And I did not make any friends. <laughs> right. Um, I would talk to like a couple girls here and there, whatever. Um, and then like once I started getting more comfortable in the gym, um, I feel like more people started getting comfortable coming up to me. And I don't know if maybe it's like because my body language changed and it wasn't so much like a, like, I'm not going to lie. When I go into the gym, I want people to fuck off and leave me alone. I'm not there to like spend my two hours chit chatting and talking away. I do have a friend that I go to the gym with pretty consistently and me and her yap the whole fucking time, but we're also working out the whole fucking time. Right. So, um, but I don't like the whole, just like standing around and fucking talking, like talk to me while I'm working out, you know, let's work in, you know, whatever you work out. I take a break. I work out. you take a break. We'll talk during that time, you know, whatever. I'm fine with that. But just standing around talking, I fucking hate that shit. Um, but I've met so many people in the gym. I have so many gym friends now that when I walk in, it doesn't matter what time of day, I, it's like familiar faces all the time, right? And it actually kind of throws me off when I see people from like the 8 to 10 a.m. And then I go in from 4 to 6 and I'm like, the fuck are you doing here? You know, or like they'll tell me that like I just had um, – that happened to me today. One of the girls that, um, or two of the girls actually, that I met pretty early on um, when I first joined the gym. They're morning girls, right? So I'm used to when I go in the mornings, I'm going to see them. I was there from two to four today. And then they show up. I'm like, the fuck are you doing here? That's so weird, right? Um, it's just like, I don't fucking know. Does anybody else get like that? I Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just a fucking me thing. But, um, yeah, so perfect example. When I'm in the gym, people that, you know, I'm now friends with are like, yeah, like first impression of you, like you looked like a fucking bitch. Um, and believe it or not, that's not new to me. It actually shocks me when um like my neighbor, um I just met her. They just moved into this neighborhood and, um, we've gotten along, we've hung out a couple times and stuff like that. And, um, the neighbor that I'm really good friends with, she was saying like, yeah, when I first met Cassie, like I was kind of like, oh my fucking God, she looks like hostile. Um, and the one that just moved in was like, really? I didn't get that at all. She looked super nice. That made me feel so good because I, that made me feel like, okay, so I am approachable. Like I, I've been working so hard on how I carry myself, um, not because I want like outside val validation, but because I don't want to come off as somebody who is mean or like doesn't give a fuck about you, right? I don't want to come off as that because I know that that's not who I am, but it can look like that from the outside, right? Um, and sometimes I don't mind the fact that people think that I'm scary. <laughs> I don't mind it. Um, but sometimes I do. And sometimes it's like, I, I just want people to know, like, I'm not going to bite your fucking head off. I'm going to be nice. I promise until you fucking piss me off. Cause that's usually how it goes. I have no reason to be mean to somebody until given a reason. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, <clears throat> I don't like to go off of first impressions because I feel like people's first impressions of me aren't like who I actually am. And usually by, you know, the second or third hangout, people are like, oh, you're actually pretty cool. And it's like, yeah, I fucking knew that. I knew I was fucking cool. I'm not a fucking loser, right? Sometimes I feel like it, but then other times my brain is like, bitch, you're cool. 
<laughs> you know, whatever. You got to talk yourself up sometimes. I don't fucking care. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't like to go off of first impressions because there are some people where I'm like, mm, you know, granted, there are some times where the first impressions are accurate and the person does, in fact, fucking suck. Um, and I'm sure that there have been people who have thought that about me. That's not my business. Um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. So, uh, yeah, enjoy that. See, this, this is, I hate that this is what happens when I stop recording episodes for a while. My brain just goes like off the walls a million miles an hour <clears throat> during like a new episode. And I feel like I'm just sitting here yapping and yapping and yapping. I mean, I know a lot of you enjoy it because you listen to this when you clean or on your way to work or, you know, whatever, which I love that. I, I wish I knew what people were doing while they were listening to this or watching this. Um, so if you're listening to this right now or you're watching this right now, let me know what you're doing. Put it in the comments message me be like hey i'm listening to this right now um i'm wiping my ass you know let me know what are you doing what do you have planned for the day what's going on you want to know what i did today i cleaned my house i did laundry went to the gym came home hung out with the neighbors and then put my kids to bed super fucking eventful i know not really. I'm trying to get back to, um, like my bad bitch self. You know, I feel like I've kind of been lost in the sauce for a little bit because it's just been a really shitty fucking time. Um, and I don't know. I feel like I've just had some shit going on where it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm just feeling like, uh, you know, um, I did panic for a couple days because I looked in the mirror. <laughs> okay. I'm about to sound fucking insane. Looks in the fucking mirror, right? Because I have a tattoo appointment coming up to finish my neck, my neck, my throat, all of it. Right. Um, and <laughs> I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God. Why did I get my throat tattooed? Why did I get my neck tattooed? Oh my god, I'm gonna have to get all of this lasered off. Oh my god. I was like full on like, what the fuck did I do to myself? Right? Um, and then a couple days later, I woke oh I'm when I tell you I was panicking, I mean I was full on like <clears throat> researching. Like, how many um, times will it take to laser off a super dark throat tattoo after, you know, how, however many years, whatever. Um, I was panicking, and I think part of that was because I was like, oh my god, I'm going back for my bachelor's degree, and I'm never going to get a job and stuff like that, as if, like, people don't get hired with tattoos, you know. We're in a more progressive world. And don't be that person. Right. Don't be the person that messages me or comes up in the comments is like, well, it's true. You know, what the fuck ever. There are places that will hire you with your fucking tattoos. Whatever. I can do a lot of shit with a bachelor's degree in what I'm going to school for and still have tattoos. OK, I was just panicking for a little bit and I was like, oh, my fucking God, I'm a worthless piece of shit. I'm a dirt bag. Right? I feel like at this point, I need to make a shirt that just says, I'm a dirtbag. And then I'm going to make, like, a bunch of them. And then you guys can buy them. And we'll just be, like, our own little crew of, like, dirtbags. Let me know. Right? Um, yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, um, I don't know. I just felt like a piece of shit. And I was like, what a degenerate mother I am. And I also think a lot of a lot of what has to do with it is the fact that like I now that my kids are in school, right? First couple of days I was doing like parent walk up, right? So I would walk up with my with my kids. Um both times in my fucking pajamas. Okay. Um I had to meet the teacher, meet the principal, stuff like that. Like all this shit going on at the school. 
And when I tell you it's a military school, right? <laughs> so the typical mom look is like very put together, um, hair done, makeup done, like when they're showing up to the school, right? Um, and this is not an exaggeration. This is like every fucking day because I do like, my kids are car riders now. Um, and, um, but I still see all the walk up parents, right? So, and the moms are like dressed to the fucking nines and they look so professional. And then there I am dressed in professional attire, right? For these meetings, everything like that. But then I got fucking throat tattoos and shit like that. I'm like, I don't fucking belong here and all these people are fucking judging me. So I was getting really paranoid and I was getting in my own fucking head and I was like, oh my God, everybody hates me because I think I'm mean and scary. Um, and they just think that I'm a degenerate fucking mother, but really it was just like all of these things that I've thought of myself coming up. Right. And I was looking in the mirror like you worthless piece of shit. Um, not, I wasn't actually talking to myself. I feel like it's weird to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, you piece of shit. Um, not that I haven't done that before, but it is fucking weird. Okay. Um, and I was just in the pits, right? I was in the pits feeling like a fucking dirt bag. Uh, but thankfully a couple days later I was like, the fuck bitch? Like I look hot. I got these for a fucking reason. Okay. Um, and usually when people are like, yeah, like your tattoos kind of scared me away. I'm like, good the fuck there are people who actively my friends neighbors actively avoid me because of my tattoos and i appreciate it because they're all fucking cunts anyways but for once you know just like i feel like i need to like sometimes walk around in a turtleneck and then when somebody's like oh you're actually so cutesy i can just be like surprise shawty take the turtleneck off and then watch them go ah run away right um, I feel like that actually is probably likely to happen in a situation like that. I don't fucking know. Anyways, a couple days later, I stopped panicking about it and I was like, I don't have the money for laser removal. Um, one and two, I don't fucking want to. I got these for a fucking reason and I love them and I'm going to finish it out and everybody can fuck off. Didn't I say at the beginning of the year? I feel like I did in my new year's uh episode that this year i was going to focus on being my bad bitch self and being unapologetically me and so i'm trying to get back to i feel like i've done pretty good at being just straightforward and fucking honest with you guys and you either fuck with it or you don't that's fine either way don't care um but yeah i feel like i've done pretty good i've just been like I said, in the pits, feeling like a fucking dirtbag. And I just need to like, be like, like, this is where I need to talk to myself in the mirror and be like, yeah, bitch, you're fucking hot. You putting in work in the gym. I'm getting muscular. Did you know that? Probably not. Cause I don't really post a whole lot, but girl, yeah. You know what happened to me? You know what the fuck happened to me? So I have been saving a pair of jeans that I last wore when I was pregnant with my oldest son, who is six and a half, by the way. Right? So I haven't worn these jeans in uh, like over seven years because they stopped fitting me like pretty much right after I found out that he was a boy, which was what, like 18, 19 weeks? Those jeans stopped fitting me. And I had not been able to wear them since because I've been a big girl, okay? Thick. Okay? Which, no shame in that, right? It happens. Mom bod takes over. You lose yourself. I happened to do it for a few years, but you know, we're, we're coming out of it. Okay. I am more than just a fucking mother. All right. I am myself. I am my own person. Anyways, back to the fucking jeans. They do not fit me, but I have held on to them all of these years because I'm like one day, one day I will fit in these jeans. Okay. So here's what happened. Fun fact. I do fit in the jeans, but in all the fucking wrong ways, right? Because I am now up to being able to press 640 pounds with my legs. Incredible, right? Yeah, go me, pat on the shoulder. Um, it. I have worked hard, okay? I've busted my ass to get to that point. My only issue now is that my waist is right around 10, 11 inches smaller than my hips. 
and like, you know, my legs in general. So all of my jeans don't fit my legs because now my legs are too big for my jeans. Don't fit my waist because now my waist is too small for my jeans. And I don't know what the fuck to do. I don't know how to solve that issue because I'm not trying to gain weight in my waist. Um, I would like to lose weight in my legs. But yeah, fuck it. I don't fucking know. You know, it's going to fucking happen. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm making progress. I am like slowly getting back to myself. But then again, I need to stop saying that because then every time I'm like, oh yeah, I'm slowly getting better. Something comes along and smacks me in the fucking face. And then I'm like in the fucking pits of it. And it could just be the fact that I am unmedicated and I have bipolar too. That could be a part of it, you know, and the PTSD paired with that, with the depression and anxiety. Just a whole little concoction of what the fuck is going on? I know I'm cool. It just, the spicy, like, side of my brain just adds to the character development. Okay? At this point, that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it, what do they call it now? When you have, like, a fucked up trauma, like, dramatic ass fucking past. Your lore. It's adding to the lore and my character development. And right now, my character development is fucking cool as shit, okay? I'm I'm a fucking cool motherfucker. Right? All in agree? Guess what? I can't hear any of your fucking opinions, so I'm going to assume that all of you responded back in your cars, washing dishes, you know, putting your kid to sleep. Yes, Cassie, you are very cool. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate you. I think that's where we're going to leave it. Honestly, um, in earnest, I do hope that I see you next Friday. I hope that your week has been good. I hope that your future week is good to you. I hope you get the monies. I hope that your ex-boyfriend leaves you the fuck alone and that you learn your fucking worth. I hope if you are waiting to hear back from a job that you got it and they're paying you more than you hoped. I hope that you got accepted into the school that you wanted. I have lots of hopes and dreams for you guys, okay? I don't enjoy seeing people struggle. I do, in fact, enjoy seeing people happy. I am somebody who cries at other people's happiness. Can't help it. It's just who I am, okay? Oh, and while we're here, I'm back in the butt devil's cropped hoodie. Go shop it. Winter's coming up. Well, fall's coming up. The cool weather's kicking in, okay? I just saw Canadian gooses, like Canadian geese. Canadian geesers, whatever the fuck you call them. Um, I saw them coming down, coming down south. So you know what that means? That means that the cold weather is hitting the north. And you know what it's going to hit next? Us. You know who's excited? Me. You know who's going to have a low of 49 degrees this upcoming week? Me. So I'm back in the fucking crop hoodie. Okay, go get yourself one. Go shop Butt Devils. It's www.buttdevils dot com right go support john elliott he's a great guy deserves it okay it'll be linked in my description per usual right um i also have a link to all of my other socials so you can go follow that or not i don't really care um if you're not subscribed already please do so i would appreciate it it helps me if you like me stick around right um same for spotify and apple Podcasts. if you're not following already please do so i beg of you actually no i don't beg do it if you want don't i don't care um anyways like i said i truly hope that i do see you guys next friday let me know if you enjoyed this episode if you're watching it on youtube and you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you didn't don't tell me because it will hurt my feelings okay anyways I hope you all have a great night. I will see you next Friday, hopefully. Stay cool.